Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Oh, I love seeing your guys' faces. All right. Well, if you're new, <laughs> welcome to um, hand stamping. Um, if you're a returning hand stamper, welcome. We have an exciting project for you today. Um, the holiday season's right around the corner, so we are going to be making this wonderful, if I step out of the way, 3D heart ornament out of our aluminum and copper bracelet planks. Um, we'll be using some texture and some letters. Um, I'm Jen, I am the marketing manager at Impress Art. I handle any marketing product descriptions, um, project descriptions, I write Rita's tutorials. Um, Rita here with me is the brains behind all of our wonderful, beautiful projects. Um, she's so creative and she surprises me every single day. <laughs> um, so I'm going to throw it over to Rita so she can introduce herself um, and we can get this class going. Hi guys. It is Thursday night. So I hope everyone's somewhat relaxed and happy that tomorrow is Friday. Um, tonight, we're going to take it back a little bit to the basics. We will learn how to use the sticker, the straight sticker guides, and line them up with our bracelets um, to form that heart. And we're also going to use some cutters to cut um, some copper blanks in half and make smaller hearts. So we are excited. Um, if you have any questions, just let Jen and I know if for some reason um, we're not being not able to get to your question because it's not related to the product that we are using. Definitely um, contact us. Um, you could send an uh, email to info, Jen, info at Impress Art. Um, support, support, support. support. Com, or reach out to us on Instagram or Facebook with a direct message. Instagram or Facebook, right, with a direct message, and um, we will do our best to help you. Um, just so you know, I know we have a lot of um, ladies here that are joining us that uh, take part every Tuesday and Thursday at 1230 in our Facebook lives. So thank you ladies for joining us tonight as well. But, you know, it, our Facebook live, we take a project and I walk you through it soup to nuts. So that's definitely something that you're interested in. It's on Facebook again, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1230. And I think we should start because this is going to be a little bit time consuming. So I'm going to throw right. it back to Jen. Yep. So while Rita is um, setting up, I want everyone to just comment in the chat room um, where you're stamping from. We like to know where you're coming from um, and maybe even say how long you've been stamping for um, so I can get an idea of who we're talking to. Um, again, I'm going to be plugging in product information as Rita uses the product um, in the chat room with the link to the product on michaels.com. So you can follow those links after. And I saw someone asking if they needed to leave. Um, you can leave the meeting. Um, Michaels will post the replay or the recorded version of this tutorial within 24 hours um, after it goes live. So you can watch it on the rerun. All righty. Um, yep. And then also on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1230 Eastern Standard Time, we do our Facebook Lives. I think next week, since it's um, Thanksgiving week, we have a special one on Monday and Tuesday. I think Jen froze. Did we all freeze? Did I freeze? Hope not. Um, she looks good to me. OK, perfect. So. Yep, and if you have any questions, please feel free to chat them to us in the message here. I will do my best to answer them. If not, please reach out to us on Instagram or Facebook at um, impressart.com, at impressart, and we'll answer them there. So if Rita's ready, I don't wanna waste any more time. We are ready. We are ready. So we're gonna get um, stamping, let's go. Okay, guys, so the first blank we're gonna use is our six inch aluminum bracelet blank. All right, um, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna cut off both ends of this so they're nice and flat. So I want you to take your Sharpie marker and just literally make a line right at the tip of that bracelet blank. 
Same thing on the other end. We're gonna take our cutters and just snip off the ends. So Rita, nice if someone straight. doesn't have a pair of cutters, is it possible to do this project without with the rounded edges? Yes, you could do them with the rounded edges. Not a, not a problem. All right. So after that, we're gonna come back in with our ruler. All right. And at your two inch mark, you're just gonna put a little dot. All right. You're gonna come in with your screw hole punch. Feed your bracelet through, line up that dot to your center punch, and then screw down. Now, if you don't have a screw hole punch, you don't need to use it to um, achieve a look of a hanging ornament. So definitely don't worry about it. going to unscrew your punch and there you have your hole okay now we're going to come back in with our ruler again and we're going to mark it in the center All right, so you have your center marked. Then you're gonna take your, your bench block, put that right in front of you. I like to always use it in front of me in a diamond pattern, okay? I'm gonna come in with my sticker guys. I'm gonna place it on my blank. I'm gonna make sure that that blue line that runs across my sticker meets the bottom edge of my metal, just like that. And that's going to ensure that I am stamping in the center of my blank. All right, then I'm gonna push it down and secure it to my block. I'm gonna come in and today we're gonna to use our three millimeter Austin uppercase and lowercase. Now this font was made exclusively for Michaels. So it's available at your Michaels store. Now, when you're doing this, you wanna keep in mind that that dot is where your, your head pin is going to go. All right, so if you look at the picture behind Jen, do you see that? Okay, so this is gonna be the top curvature of your heart, all right? Because it rests at an angle. So right here is going to be where you want your message or your name, all right? So I'm gonna start here. And with this font, it's a little bit on the wide side. I'm gonna use a space in between the black and the orange hash marks. All right, so I am going to do a last name. So that's gonna be R. You know what, I'm gonna do it all in capital. Let's do all capital so we could see and then we'll do the names in lowercase. So I'm gonna use um, every other hash marks. So I'm gonna use the orange. So I have H, O, D, oh God, look at me. Did I completely mess that sticker up? You know it's Thursday night when I'm messing stickers up. <laughs> Hold on one, let me grab another. All right. 
Let's put that down. All right, here we go. Sorry about that. So I'm going to use A R H O D E S. All right, I'm going to put roads inside of my ornament. I'm going to open up. This is the uppercase. Now, keep in mind that this is a really, even though it's three millimeter, it's a very wide fat font, okay? And it's it's got he heavy parts of it and very thin parts of it. So it's gonna take a little bit more to stamp this out. And we will walk through that together. So I'm gonna pull my R out. Where's my hammer? Okay. So guys, when you're stamping with our product, you always wanna make sure that the impress art's facing you, all right? You're gonna bring this down. Your stamp should always be in your non-dominant hand. So I'm a right, I'm righty. So my hammer's always gonna be on my right side of my block. My stamp's always gonna be in my left hand. So I'm gonna take that flat and lightly drag it. I'm gonna make sure that my letter matches the corresponding letter on my sticker guide. Then I'm gonna put some pressure on it. Just like when you rubber stamp, you wanna put pressure on that stamp. Then I'm gonna take my hammer and give it a nice hit. Keep in mind that what you're working on is aluminum. It's a soft metal, so we don't have to be too aggressive with it. You're gonna notice the difference when you're stamping between the aluminum and the copper because the copper is a harder metal. So we're gonna to try to do a tilt and tap technique. If you notice that your impressions aren't full, meaning maybe you're missing top of the R, the bottom of the R, we're gonna try tilt and tap now for the next one. I'm gonna pull you guys up just a little bit so you can see the top of my hammer. I'm gonna take my H again, placing it down, lightly dragging it till I feel that restriction of that sticker. And I'm gonna take my hammer. Now with this tilt and tap, I'm gonna hit it once at the top. Then I'm actually going to tilt it towards me, hit it, tilt it back, hit it, side and side. And that's gonna make sure that you have a nice and even impression throughout. I'm not gonna be so aggressive because remember this is aluminum. So I'm gonna bring that down, gonna hit it dead on, bring it back, forward, side, side. And there is my H. I'm gonna go to the O again. You could hit it once if you've worked with these fonts before and you feel comfortable with the hit that you just gave. If not, definitely try to tilt and tap it. My D. My E. And last but least, my S. So I have my middle, my last name, a last name inside of my ornament. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I can always come in because remember we're bending this. This is going to go around. I'm going to come in now with my established date. So I'm going to go with uh, an uppercase, then a lower. Okay. Again, I'm feeling that restriction, I'm giving a nice tap. I'm gonna move on to my lower case. Flip that around. There we go. And Austin also has a corresponding letter set. Okay, coordinating letter set, uh, number set. And it goes from zero to eight. For your nine, you're just gonna utilize your six upside down. So I'm gonna pull that out, come back in with my marker and write my date, my year. Place that down, lightly drag it. Give it a nice hit. Oh, 
always make sure that you see that impress art facing you when you're stamping. All right. So then we have our first side. So if you see that when you're stamping your bracelet, you have a little bit of a rainbow, a cup, a cup gets a little wonky or you get some cupping at the bottom. There's a way that you could fix that with the multifunction hammer. Okay. This hammer comes with four different heads. It comes with a nylon head, a chasing head, a ball peen head, and a sprinkle design stamp. You're going to utilize your nylon head. You're going to turn that. Okay. And you're going to see, do you see how you see, let's take that sticker just so you could see it better. Flip you guys down a little bit. See that space in between how it's not completely flat. All right. We don't want that. We want to get rid of it. So what we're going to do is you're going to put it vertically on your block and you're just going to give it a couple of taps. And you see, we have no space anymore and we are nice and straight again. So remember that your nylon head is your best friend, should always be around when you are stamping. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some texture in that same hammer, okay? And I'm gonna go around the outskirts of my piece. I'm gonna hold my finger, place my finger on the block where I feel comfortable and I'm really going to just texture the outskirts of this bracelet blank. And it's gonna leave a really nice cross-hatched pattern around the outskirts of that blank. Rita, are you using the sprinkle stamp that comes with the multifunction hammer? Yes. want to follow that texture all the way around so you have that nice and finished now we're going to turn it around all right and I want on the opposite side I want to put my year on there actually you know what let's save the year we will maybe put some initials on the other side. So I have it, this is more like a family pendant that I'm making. The one that I did in the picture that is behind Jen is Jen just became a first time homeowner. Hooray yeah. for Jen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Could be the worst decision of my life, but yes, I did. There you go. So um, we made Jen a nice ornament. Okay. So with this one, I'm going to do more of um, a family ornament. So right here, we have the family last name. We have the established in 2015. And I think on the outskirts, I'm going to put the family's initials on it. So with that, I want to really go around my ornament. I don't so much want to um, go horizontal. I want to go vertically down my blank. So I'm going to show you how you could do that. So with that being said, you're going to put one of your sticker guides on your block. All right. And I want to start right up at the top. Now, what's, what's, when you're stamping on both sides of these guys, you want to be a little bit careful. So we're not going to be as aggressive 
with stamping because we don't want to mar the bottom and the back part of our desk, okay, that we stamp the roads on. So we are going to come in and I'm going to take a, another sticker guide. I'm going to just make you guys go down a little bit. Perfect. Let's see. We're going to line that up. And I'm going to put a sticker. I'm going to do my, let's see. We're going to do, we're utilizing the black. So I'm going to do A. Um, and I'm going to skip another black hash mark. Skip another black hash mark. And D. Okay. And then we're going to do O. And we're going to skip a spot. I think we'll put, let's see, we have a two millimeter heart. So we'll use that little tiny heart and A. Okay. So how we line that up is I'm going to come in with my sticker guide. And I'm going to line up. right underneath, let's see. I'm gonna make sure that my sticker guide is right underneath that A, that A on that orange line. Can everybody see that? All right. So by lining that up on that orange line underneath my A, Okay, because I'm using my uppercase, I'm going to sit nicely on my sticker guide. So I'm going to take my uppercase A, bring that down. And now with my sticker, I'm going to work right between the black and the orange. So my orange center line is going to be on the side of my blank. My sticker is going to be lined up with my orange line on the sticker that's on my block. I'm going to come down, line that up, and give it a very light tilt and tap. So I have my A right there. I'm going to do the same with my ampersand. Gonna come in. With my orange center line on the end ledge of my bracelet and my sticker right on that orange line. And I have my A, but I'm not gonna use my A anymore. You don't really have to mark this. You could just put a line on it to show you where you're gonna line up your stamp. And I'm gonna come in with my ampersand all right, and where is that? Here we go. Line that up right in the center. Okay. Same thing with my D. I have my A and D, mom and dad, and now I'm gonna move on to the kids. I have a really small little whimsy heart that comes in the pack of three that's available at Michael's. So I'm gonna utilize that in between my O and my A. Once again, lining up my center orange line at the edge of my metal making sure that my sticker is right on that orange line underneath my O. That's my O. Here is my heart. And last 
but not least, my A. Okay. Pull my sticker off there. And there we have A and D and O part A. Okay. And you notice that I wasn't so aggressive. So I still have my really nice impressions on the opposite side of my bracelet. Okay. Now for the next step, we're going to enamel. Okay. We're going to take our black enamel marker. Pull my sticker off. And I'm going to run my enamel over my stamped impressions, making sure that they are completely filled in. Mm -hmm. Then with a dry household paper towel, I'm just going to blot and lightly wipe. Yeah, I'm not really using force. Okay. Perfect. Now I want to show you guys something. So by troubleshooting, do you see how my two is missing its center part? Now, if you have an impression that's half stamped, okay, and you have patience, all right, you can get your stamp right back into that impression. So what I like to do is I like to hover on the side of it and then lightly bring that over, okay? So I have an impression on the bottom. And my stamp just really just falls right into that impression that's left, okay? So I know that my center is where I'm missing an impression. So I'm really just gonna push down and give it one nice, even tap. And there is my full two. So I'm gonna come back in with my enamel marker, fill that in again. I'm gonna dab it, lightly wipe. There we go. So we have a nice full impression of that number two. All right, now we're gonna flip it over. Same thing on the other side. We'll enamel it. You're gonna take your enamel marker, run that right over. Make sure all of your impressions are filled in. Now, if you are new to this font, it is wide, so it does have a lot of negative space. You mm -hmm. definitely want to let the enamel dry in the impressions. You don't wanna be super aggressive with it and wipe it out really quick. But just keep in mind that with this marker, and I know that I've used both the Sharpie and the enamel, keep in mind that this enamel pen is water-based, so it's gonna come off your hands first and foremost. Second, and the most important thing about this marker is that it's formulated to sit inside of your impressions. You don't have to worry about your enamel coming out. Now, with that being said, if your impression is not deep enough, the enamel has nowhere to sit and coagulate. So you want to make sure that your impressions are nice and deep so your enamel could sit and form a bed in the center of it and really dry so it doesn't come out. So again, take dry paper towel, lightly dab that, and lightly wipe. And there we have it. I have my O and A, A and D, so I'm very happy with that. I'm gonna take the texture and just texture the edges, I think, of this for the inside, just a little bit. Nothing too over the top, just to add a little bit of a design element. 
just like we did on the other side. Just go right around. All right, there we have it. So we're gonna notice that if you cut your ends, they're gonna be a little bit sharp. So what you wanna do is you wanna take the core, oops, as it falls, the core side of your sanding block, and you really just want to knock your ends down a little bit because nobody wants to be stuck by a piece of metal when you're putting up a Christmas tree, right? All right, so I'm gonna feel it, feels good to me. No sharp edges. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. Just knock my edges down a little bit. And then I'm gonna come in with my buffing block, which is white, but this is my old one. I don't like to throw things out. It's still very usable. All right, so I'm gonna come in with my super fine side and I'm just going to run it over. And you can see how pretty that polishes that piece up. Now you could polish it at the end, but I just like to do, um, I like to do it in between and then I like to do it at the end plus whatever you have on the inside of your heart. You wanna polish before you bend it. All right. So now we've got two pieces polished up, one piece polished up, sorry, not two pieces. All right, and we're gonna move on to that tiny dainty heart that is on the bottom of Jen's ornament. That is her backdrop. All right, so we're gonna take our copper bracelet and we wanna make sure that we have no film on either side of them. So the film could be easily pulled off just by working the corner of it and then pulling it off. I already yeah, um, removed the film from both sides of my bracelet. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna come in with my ruler. All right. And if you want, you could leave your ends rounded like that. I like to square my ends off. So I'm just gonna put a little mark here. Come in with my cutters. Give it a snip. Come back in with my ruler, measure it at three, give it a little mark, okay? Come in with my cutters again, give it a little snip, all right? So now you have a piece of copper that's three inches in length. Now we're not gonna put a hole in this one because this is gonna actually be strung on that heart. So what I want you to do is obviously you could come in and we know that it's three inches. If this helps you out any, you can find your center, okay? Which is gonna be one and a half. So you know now that's the peak of your heart. So if that's the peak, center peak of the bottom of your heart, you know you're gonna wanna put your year on either side. Okay, now remember your top halves are gonna be curled. So you want it somewhere in between that space. All right, we're gonna take our sticker guide again. All right, 
And I'm gonna make sure that my metal is hitting the bottom of that blue line across the way. I'm gonna really put that on my block. Make sure that it's nice and secure. Now you are going to notice when you are stamping with the copper that it is a harder metal. So if you're getting your letters, the impression on the fur on with one hit or two hits um, on your aluminum, you're going to want to use a tilt and tap for this. So with this, I'm going to do 2020. I'm utilizing my black hash marks. I'm going to come in, place it flat. Let me take this up a little bit for you guys. Hit it once in the center, bring it towards me, away from me, one side, the other, and back in the center. And I'm gonna have a really nice impression of my two. All right, so there is my 2020. And again, just like the aluminum, I have a dip in my metal. So I'm going to turn that over. I'm gonna make sure that I see that rainbow cupping on the bottom. I'm gonna take my nylon head, give it a few taps, nothing aggressive, and I'm nice and flat again, okay? Now, it's your choice, personal preference, if you want the year on the outskirts or if you want the year on the inside. I know on Jen's heart, we have the year on the inside, which kind of makes it a little challenging to see when it's hanging on the tree. So I think I'm going to really just leave it on the outskirts of my heart. So I'm gonna come back in with my texture head. All right. And again, I'm going to do the outskirts. I'm going to actually stamp around my 2020. So it looks a lot like that. Okay. Come in, give it a really nice texture. Go around my 2020. Now, if you wanted to texture first and then lay your numbers on, you would texture your blank first, then lay your numbers or your letters on. Okay. I'm going to continue to texture my bracelet. And just keep in mind that when you're using these design stamps, your texture stamps that don't have the notch in it, you're going to have to, every once in a while, tighten your screw while you're working only because everybody hits it at a different tempo. You know, we all hit it differently. So sometimes it will come loose and you'll feel it because it'll start to rattle a little bit in your, in your, in your hammer. All right, and all you have to do is tighten your screw at the bottom. Perfect. So now we have that completely textured. And I'm going to take, these are my ends are a little sharp, so I'm going to take my core side again of my sanding block, and I'm just going to run it over, knocking down those edges. All right, perfect. Now, this is raw jeweler's copper. Okay, it might tarnish a little bit on you, but the, for the most part, you could always polish it back up. That's why it's so nice to have 
one of these buffing blocks because it literally takes the tarnish right off of it. I'm just gonna run my block over it because I just wanna see how that texture shines. All right, then I'm gonna come in with my enamel and I'm gonna run that over my 2020. Now, when, it ha when you have that cross hatching of a texture, it's completely up to you if you want to have that patinaed as well. You could run your marker over it. Um, and you know what I'll do? We'll do one side with the patina and one without. Um, so you could, guys could see the difference it makes. All right. Then I'm going to let it dry. And I just have my paper towel. Where did it go? There we go. Again, I'm gonna take my dry paper towel, lightly dab, and then wipe. Now you could see how your texture is very pronounced when you put enamel inside of it, all right? Or you could leave it nice and shiny with just that um, flat texture on it. And you could polish it up. So it's two very different looks. All right. Now for the inside, we're not going to have anything in the inside, but I always like to polish it up anyway, because it just looks really nice. There we go. So now our stamping part of our project is over and now it's time for us to do some bending. All right, we're gonna save the most complicated for last and that's that copper heart. Let's just set that to the side. All right, and we're gonna bring in our aluminum. Let me clean up my block really quick. Have more room, perfect. All right, so the tools that I'm gonna need to bend this part is our round nose pliers, okay? And our ring bending plier. All right, we're gonna start in the center. Now I know we marked it, but our mark came off. So we're gonna come back in. I'm gonna drop something else. It is definitely Thursday. All right. So I'm just gonna leave a little mark, okay? Just a little. And I'm gonna come in at my center, just like that. And I'm going to how did I figure I was gonna do that? Yep, I'm going to bend in. So I'm taking my roads and I am bending just like that, okay? Because I want it in half. There we go. All right. So you're gonna use that rounded part of your plier, okay, to make that. And then I'm gonna come in and if you don't have your hole, it's okay. We could still use it. We could still, you could still use, use it as a heart. All right. Even though your hole punch is not there. Okay. You're going to come in from your top and you're going to squeeze. And this is going to begin to form the top of your heart. Okay. Then you're going to pull it out. You're gonna come in and you're gonna to continue to bend and you're gonna see that it would all come together. Now, when you're very much like that, it shows that you have just a little bit more squeeze left. So you're gonna come in and you're gonna squeeze but you're not going to close your nylon jaws. Do you see how you're just forming the metal? 
All right, you can do the same thing to this side. I want you to pull out a little bit. Come in here and you're gonna squeeze. And you're gonna form your bracelet into that heart. All right, so now we have our heart, our first heart done. I'm just gonna come in. And like I said, it's personal preference. You know how much you want your, the top of your heart turned. I'm just gonna, I want it a little bit tighter. So I'm just gonna bring it in a little bit. There we go. All right. So now you have that little bit of a ledge between one and the other. Ends. Do we see that? Okay. I'm going to show you how you can fix that. So you're going to come in with your blank. You're going to put it on your block. And we're going to take, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. We're going to take both the ball peen head that's in your multifunction hammer and your chasing head. So first we're going to use the chasing head. You're going to just take it and give a couple of nice taps. And what this is going to do is while your chasing head is hitting your top here, it is actually forming the bottom and making it really nice and smooth. I'm going to give it a couple of hits. All the way around. All right. And then we see we have that one part of the bracelet that's very wonky and, and sticking out a little bit. This is the process of how you're going to fix that. So going around it, again, it's going to smooth it out and give it a really nice shape. Whoops. Okay. And that's one side. Okay. You're going to flip it over, do the same to the other side. A couple of nice. Light taps. All right. And then we're going to change heads. And we're going to use that ball peen head. So I'm going to loosen my design stamp. I'm going to make sure that I'm putting my ball peen head in my hammer. I'm going to tighten my bottom screw. And what I'm gonna do to this is I'm going to give it a little bit of texture. Look how pretty that looks, guys. Okay, you're gonna give it texture just really on your, on the edge of your bracelet, on your bracelet, okay, that you formed into a heart. And because it's aluminum, this takes this so nicely. Okay, and you could do that on both sides, but once you do your texture on one side, you wanna do it on your other side, but you wanna be a little less aggressive with this side because you don't wanna knock out your texture that you just textured on the other side, okay? So just be mindful, type it, type it very, very lightly. All right, and then you could take your buffing block and just really run it over and look how beautiful that shines. Look how pretty that looks with that ball peen texture on the outskirts. So right here we have roads on the inside. We have the established, the year, and then on the outside, we have our A and D and our O and A, so pretty. And now we have that hole right there, okay? Now you can, if you don't have it, um, you could always, if you don't have a hole punch and you didn't get to use it, 
You could always use a ornament hook mm -hmm. and just bend that right over it. Look how pretty that looks. All right, and it gives it still gives it that three dimension. If you have wire, if we have time, um, I'll show you how to bend one with wire really quick, but we are going to move on now to that head pin. If you do have a head pin, you're gonna feed that right inside that hole. Okay, put your finger underneath it. Take your pliers, bend that over. Okay, creating a loop, just like that. Bring it back and then wrap your wire around it. Bringing your wire right back through and around it. Perfect, there we go. All right, okay. So then we're gonna set that to the side and we're gonna come in with our copper bracelet. Now we've marked our one and a half inch side. We're going to spot, we're gonna put our round nose pliers right on that mark, take our fingers, and bend it right over, just like that. So now you have that V. Okay, now the same thing with this. All right, guys, you're going to start at the top, give it a squeeze, go down, give it another squeeze. Okay, so you're gonna have a piece that looks like this. Take the thing, your finger, pull that out a little bit. So your blank looks a lot like that. All right. Come right back through, squeeze it again, come down, squeeze it again. So now your heart looks a lot like a strawberry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So now with your heart that looks a lot like a strawberry, you're going to take your round nose plier, okay? And you could pull your, pull your strawberry out a little bit and clinch the end and you're just going to curl it in. All right, so there's one side and then I'm gonna curl in my other end. And I could pull it out again. And I could just bend it in a little bit more. And there is our tiny heart, okay? Do the same thing. I'm not gonna texture the outskirts of this one. I'm just gonna take my chasing head and I'm gonna give it a couple of nice taps. On one side. Um, you could use a less thicker bracelet, but if you go with a thinner bracelet, it's probably just really gonna um, become, you know, unformed at that point. So it's important that you use a thicker gauge. So now you're gonna come in and you're gonna pull your heart apart a little bit. You're gonna slide your heart right on and then bend your bracelet, your heart, your first heart right back into place. And there is your ornament. All right. So you could see you have all your information that you wanted. How cute is that? And it's super easy to do. All right. 
Now, really quick, if you have um, wire, we have five minutes, Jen, are we good? Yes, you're good, Rita. Okay. So I'm gonna just put this aside. If you have some wiring and they do have it in the in the um, jewelry section at Michael's, the wire is by Beetle on. So this is always good to have this kind of wire. This is um, an 18 gauge wire. So I'm gonna measure out four inches. Then I'm gonna cut it with my, you could use flush cutters because it's nice and thin. All right. Then what you're gonna do guys is you're gonna take your ring bending plier, okay? And you're just gonna follow the circumference like you're bending a ring, okay? Going around, going around, all right? So you have a nice loop just like that. Then you're gonna come back in and you're gonna bend it the other way and go around. So it makes a really nice S hook, just like that. And you could keep on going around. And you know, if you wanna get fancy, you could put a bead in the center if you'd like. I like to take my ends with my needle nose plot, my needle nose, and I just like, my round nose, sorry. And I just like to give it a little bit of a design feature. So you take it and I just go in with it. And then you could always come back in with your bracelet, or your ring bender and bend it again. And these are really fun and really super cute. And if you don't have that head pin, you could just close it. And now you have a really pretty dainty hook for your ornament. I see Maria likes that. <laughs> <I'm> Maria. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one more thing. I think we have some, we have like three minutes, but just so you, you guys could see this, where is my blank? This is where I like to push the button. Jen wants to kill me. Okay, guys, your wire can be textured also. Don't be afraid. Give it really nice ball peen edge. Do you see that, how it looks diamond cut? Maria, Maria, like, what do you think? Maria, Maria loves it. She's giving me the heart, Maria. All right, Jackie loves it. So don't forget, guys, use your tools. Use your tools. Learn, learn your tools. All right, that is your number one um, thing in metal stamping. If you learn your tools, you'll be super successful at it. Oh, All look right. at Roseanne. Good job. Let me see. Oh, this is my, this is our favorite part. Look at you, Ro. Oh, and Brenda, Lisa. Oh, wait, I didn't get to see it yet. Hold on, I gotta turn the camera around. Okay, oh, now go oh, favorite. Oh, Sandy just turned her camera on. Sandy's not shy. Oh, I love it. Roseanne, that looks yeah, great. Yeah, so you guys stamped with us, turn your camera on so we can <gasps> see. Brenda, that looks fantastic. Hi, Linda. Lisa looks great too. Oh, awesome my God. job. I love it. Well, thank you guys for sharing. That's perfect. Hi, Sandy. Oh, that looks great. You guys should be pros at manipulating metal by now. Pros. So we do this thing at Impress Art called Stamp It Forward, where we're spreading a uh, holiday cheer, uh, joy, happiness, positivity um, to our families um, that we can't see during the holiday season. So these are great ornaments to put inside of an envelope and send to your family and friends across the world. And if you do do that, just remember to hashtag Stamp It Forward so we can see them on Instagram. <laughs> Jen just wants it. Jen, I've, I've decided that we've become like level four stalkers. So when you guys like stamp things, commenting. we see it. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. I know it's been a long day. A lot of you were with us earlier today, 
Um, but thank you again so much. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Ro. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. And we will see you if you want to see a little bit more um, and learn a little bit more about metal stamping. We will see you on Tuesday on our Facebook Lives. All right. Yep. We have more classes coming December 3rd and 17th with Michaels. Perfect. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good night. Good night.